Okay, today we're tying one of my favorite, favorite types of flies um, to tie and to fish, uh, which is a quill body dry fly. Now, <clears throat> the quill bodies make for a really, really nice looking fly, um, but there's a lot of little things you got to make sure you do to make sure that you get that look that you want. Um, it's very easy to have a quill body look, you know, jagged and all over the place and not really exactly what you want. Um, but there's a couple of things you can do to avoid that. So what I'm using is this is 16 knot brown nano silk thread. Uh, it's a very very good thread, very strong. Even though it's you know I, it, they they say it's no, actually I think it's 18 0 um, but it's very very strong. You can really pull this tight. You can even spin deer hair with this stuff. Um, so what we're gonna do is get that started right at the hook eye, and I'm gonna bring my thread down probably about a quarter of the way or so. That's probably about good right where it is. Now for the wings, <clears throat> I'm going to use a couple of mallard feathers that are dyed wood duck. And I went ahead and kind of prepped them ahead of time where I lined up the tips, uh, made sure that they were the same shape, shape, same length, same everything. And I butted them up next to each other and I stripped off all the fibers at the bottom so that I could line these up the way that I wanted. And I'm just having a hard time getting them to sit in my fingers the way I want. <laughs> Sorry, my allergies are acting up. Come on. Okay, that's really what I'm shooting for. I've got them together. And what we're going to do is pinch these together so they don't come apart. And I'm going to lay those right on top of the hook and get a nice loose pinch wrap in there. And then I'm going to pull it tight and secure them. Then I'm going to go one, two, three, four, about five or six wraps behind and a few wraps back up onto itself. I can see that it slid a little bit. If you see that, you can slide the whole contraption and then tighten it down again and that ought to hold it where you want it. Okay, that's what we should have. Now, one of the things that you want to keep in mind when you're tying a quill body is underbody, underbody, underbody. And what I mean by that is the quill body is really susceptible to little imperfections. So you want to make sure that everything you do underneath the quill is such that you're not going to see a lot of those imperfections. One of the ways that you ensure that that doesn't happen is your thread. I never tie a quill body fly with uni thread or any of that kind of stuff. I always use UTC or nano silk, something that lays flat. That way you can get a nice smooth uniform underbody and you're not going to see any of those mistakes. First thing you want to do is we're going to take our excess and we're going to lay our scissors flat and we are going to angle those down and get our material cut off at an angle. That way as you go down the hook shank, your thread will develop the start of that tapered body that you're looking for. Okay? Now obviously here, you got a little bit of space that needs to be filled in. Uh, that's going to be filled in with our tail, which what I'm going to do is, I've got this grizzly uh, large feather off a of grizzly cape. Um, it's larger than what I'm ever really going to use. I'm never going to wrap anything of that size. So I'm just going to take a clump of these off. This isn't what I normally use for dry fly tailing. I, I usually use spade hackle, um, but I don't have any grizzly spade hackle. And you don't really need to use grizzly on this fly. I mean, you can use pretty much anything you want. I'm using grizzly for the tail and the hackle, um, but you can use anything you want. Quill body dries. Um, can be tied with pretty much any color to mimic almost any insect. Every mayfly that I mimic, I have a quill body version. Sulfurs, Hendrickson's, all of them. I really, really like quill bodies. Okay, now I don't know if the camera is going to pick this up or not. The more you wrap your thread, the more your thread is going to twist. Now, every wrap you make, as I said in the beginning, you want your thread to lay flat. So if your thread starts to twist, you want to make sure that you rotate it the other direction. The way you can tell whether or not it's twisted 
is you can look right where the thread meets the hook and if it's opened up and you can see that it's flat laying then you're good to go uh, but once it starts to look like a uni thread or something like that then you want to make sure that you untwist it and we're going to go all the way up <clears throat> whoops i missed a step i'm sorry i'm going to go back down to where i tied my tail in before i move my thread back up the hook what i want to do is i want to tie in my quill body and I want to tie that in now because I want to try to save as many thread wraps as I possibly can. I love natural quills. I use natural quills as much as I possibly can. Um, there's a great video on Orvis on how to chemically strip them. I highly recommend you watch that. Um, that's what I use for all my quills. So this is a natural peacock quill. It's not a synthetic. And what you want to do is tie this a certain way. You can see on the quill that it's got that black stripe on the one side. That's one of the things that gives it that buggy segmentation. When you tie the quill in, you want to tie it in specifically with the black stripe down. And you want to tie it in at the back, right at the butt of the tail, at a 45 degree angle on the side of the hook. So we're going to come in at 45 degrees on the side of the hook, give a nice loose wrap just to get everything in place, and then tighten it as I go and cinch that down as I move my thread up the hook. Okay. And I'm going to try to weasel my scissors in here to get this excess cut off of the tailing material. And you want to cut it off such that the remaining rides up and finishes off your taper. And that looks pretty good. Okay. Now for the wings. We're going to move our thread right to where the thread meets the wings. You want to grip these with both fingers and pull them back nice and tight. And you want to build a thread dam in front of those. Now, do not go crazy with your thread on the thread dam. You don't want too many turns of your thread in front of your wings because the bigger of a dam that you build up, the more that that extra thread is going to start throwing your hackle off all over the place and you're not going to get nice stand up hackle. Now we have to split these. I use two feathers so it should be pretty easy to look down the hook and see where those two feathers separate. So grab one clump and run not one but two thread wraps through the middle of those wings. Grab the other clump with your fingers and run two thread wraps the other direction through. And that'll get your wings split. All right, had some focus issues. So that's what it should look like on top when you get the wings split. So now you wanna stand them up. So we're gonna flip our thread over to the far side and loop it underneath that far wing. It helps if you hold it tight a little bit, even though sometimes that's hard to do. Uh, simply because your thread tension can collapse your wings and you want to get a couple of thread wraps as close to the base of the wings as you possibly can and that'll help stand them up. We're going to do the same thing to the clump closest to us. If you can control your thread tension sometimes you can do it without holding the wings but it all depends. So we'll get two wraps on the base of that and our wings are pretty nicely split. Now you can see the wings are also leaning forward a little bit, and that's fine, that's not a big deal, because when we start wrapping our hackle, we're gonna get some wraps in front that are gonna help push those wings straight up and down, and you won't have a problem. All right, so I'm gonna move my thread back a little bit to where I'm gonna start my hackle, and we wanna wrap our body. The big thing with your quill body, it's tied in here at a 45 degree angle. Do not roll the quill over when you flip it over your hook because then what's going to happen is you're going to change where the black stripe is. You want the black stripe to stay right where it is. So what you want to do is you want to make sure that that quill continues to wrap with the black stripe towards the back of the fly. That's what's going to give you that nice buggy segmentation. It's if that if it's it's if that quill flips over that you're going to see a different look and that's not what you want. So I'm going to keep the orientation of this quill the way I want. I'm going to flip it over for my first wrap. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my hackle pliers and I'm going to clip those onto the bottom and use these to help guide it. 
Now, when you wrap this, I know I'm using my rotary vise, but I always wrap my quills by hand. You want every wrap to butt up against the previous so that you get that alternating natural color and black stripe all the way up your hook shank. And another thing too, I never soak my quills. I know a lot of people soak them in water, but to be honest with you, if you're working and not really forcing these things and really ripping it, they're fine. I, I mean, have I had some quills split? Yeah, a couple, but it happens so rarely. You know, it's an extra step that I really just don't worry about. I never soak my quills. I just go ahead and wrap them right on there and we should be good. And I'll grab that end, get that secured, tie up the excess a little bit, and we're good. There we go. Now, once you get to this stage, uh, if you start putting in your hackle and all that, you're going to kind of have some material in the way. So what I'm going to do before I do anything else, I've got this uh, solar as resin and <clears throat> I'm going to paint that onto the body and get that cured up. You don't really need a thick layer. I like this particular bottle of resin because it comes with this applicator brush. So we're going to go and just paint on a nice thin layer. Make sure that there's no bubbles or anything. Real, real thin layer. Take our UV torch. few seconds I'll get that cured up you know and even though the quill itself is pretty delicate once you get this cured up and solid you shouldn't have any problems I, I tend to go a little overboard with my curing I just want to make sure that it's all good to go and I won't have any problems good okay so there's that nice even well tapered body that underbody is important now what I'm gonna do for hackle is I have here a feather off of a silver graded grizzly cape that I'm gonna do my same process with I'm gonna strip off some barbs from the stem and strip off some extra barbs on the far side because when I start turning this it's going to lay down on the bare stem and that's going to help my hackle stand up nice and straight. So I'm going to move my thread back to the quill. I'm going to get that tied in with a couple of wraps. Put one wrap behind to get that standing nice and straight. Finish the rest of it. And I'm going to put one little hitch knot in there. I think I'm going to tie this with the rotary function. I said before that I'm going to show you how I do this by hand. I'll do it sooner or later. So I'm going to get that secured in the bobbin holder. Again, when you wrap your hackle, one nice firm wrap to make sure that that first wrap has nice straight hackle standing straight up and down. Then you can start turning your vise. I want that to roll over a little bit. Get about five or six turns in before we hit the wings. Once you hit the wings, this is where I make this wrap by hand. I go, I fold my hand over and grip it. <clears throat> fold the wings back. Make sure that next turn butts up nice and tight to those wings so that it guides every wrap after that to sit the way we want it to sit. Make sure that the stem continues to butt up next to the previous wrap as you turn. And I'm going to wrap this all the way to the eye. Once I get to the eye, I'll show you how I get that nice clean cut off head. I'm going to take my hackle, raise it straight up in the air. I'm going to make one clean hard wrap right up over the top that just fell off. Damn it. Hang on a minute. Now we're back in business. Then, as I said before, 
If you take a pair of scissors and you slip that in there right now, you're going to get a lot of little errant fibers laying out, which you see right now. That's just because I slipped my thread off, kind of screwed it up, but we're okay. I'm going to fold that back, make sure all the fibers are out of the way, give a couple of thread wraps, and once that's all secure, I'm going to take my scissors, get in there as close as I can, get that hackle snipped out of there, along with any errant fibers that are laying in a position you don't want. <clears throat> And then we can get right in there and whip finish a nice clean head. And we are good to go. Now the good thing about quills is you can buy several dyed quills to give you the color of any mayfly you want to imitate. Um, the naturals can imitate a number of different things. I, I tie a lot of my Cahills with a natural quill. They come out exactly the way that I want. Let's see if I can zoom in a little bit without losing my focus. Doesn't look like I can. It's about as good as we're going to get. So a size 14 quill body dry. Make sure you keep your underbody nice and uniform and smooth with a flat thread. Um, you know, you don't have to use the grizzly combination. You can use a number of different colors. Done is fine. Um, you can change up the colors with different types. There are synthetic quills you can use. Uh, but as I said before, I really do love the naturals. And uh, comes out to a real sharp looking fly. 